we're going to be taking a look at the assignment that you have that's up new today, WAMAP 7.3. And rather than going through a lesson today on how to do some stuff, uh, because it's been so long since you have learned how to do this, it's just worthy of taking a little bit of time and doing a bit of a review session. And we're going to use the assignment you're doing today as a way to do that. So, of course, your numbers will look different in your assignment. The order that you see these problems will be different than in your assignment but this is at least going to give you an idea about how we do each different type of problem. Now, my number one happens to be this, a negative 2 to the power of x plus 5. First of all, notice that that plus 5, it's there in the exponent with the x. And if it's up there with the x, you know it's moving it in the x direction. So we know that that's going to be moving it sideways. And the negative, that's out front. So that's going to be flipping it upside down. Notice neither of those is going to change where our asymptote is. Our asymptote since it's to the power of x, should be a horizontal line. So we're going to choose this button. You haven't seen this button come up yet, but we will here soon. So we know it's going to be a horizontal asymptote. And because it wasn't moved up or down at all, I'm going to be putting that right on the x-axis. Now, it doesn't matter where I actually put the dot to lock that asymptote in place. I put it over here at 3, and that 3 has absolutely no particular significance whatsoever. What does matter is my normal first point would be right there. It'd be up one on the y-axis. In this case, though, it's not going to be. We have two different changes that are being made to it. One is the negative out front is going to flip this whole thing upside down. So instead of starting up one, we're going to start down one. And then the plus five. The plus five is up in the exponent, so it moves it in the x direction. Specifically, plus member moves it to the left. So that's where I'm going to put my first point. So I go ahead and click there. And now you'll notice that there's an actual curve being drawn in with that. Now notice that if I go above the asymptote right now, nothing draws in. Because this is an exponential graph, it cannot cross the asymptote. So then, I just need to figure out where does the next point go. Well, it gets bigger as we go over to the right. As our x's get bigger, our y's are going to go away from the asymptote. Now, how much? Notice that it's a 2. The 2, remember, means that it's going to be doubling its distance from the asymptote. So we're starting here 1 away. That means my next point needs to be 2 away. And so I plot that point right there. Notice it drew in the graph for me. This one is now done. Uh, just to kind of show you how that pattern is continuing to work, though, I do want you to be able to just look and see that if we take a closer look here, that we're going to end up going down 4 when I go over one more. And if I go over one more past that, I'm going down a total of 8 from the asymptote. And that's how that whole thing's behaving there. All right, that one is done. You would click Submit, and we're good to go. On to the next one. Here we're finding an inverse of the equation, an inverse of a quadratic. Uh, this is where you'd want to subtract the 6 from both sides, and then take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root of both sides, remember that you're, you need to include the plus or minus. When you type in that plus or minus into WAMAP, you literally are going to type it in as plus minus right there. And I know it's saying syntax error at the moment, but uh, by the time you got everything in, it will understand what that means there for typing in the plus or minus. All right, then we hit this type of inverse equation. So yeah, you add the four to both sides and you square both sides. A note when you square both sides, you're going to want that actually entered as x plus 4 squared, like that in the parentheses, because remember, exponents do not distribute. So that's not going to be the same thing as saying x squared plus 16. It does not work that way. You can multiply it out, but it's unnecessary here, and it would actually be x squared plus 8x plus 16, because you got to multiply x plus 4 by x plus 4. And of course, in this case, I'd still have to subtract the 7 on the end as well. But then there's this extra bit on this one. That's because the original graph is a square root. It's just that one half of a parabola on its side. So we need to show that our answer here is also just going to be half of a parabola. And so this one is a domain restriction for the inverse. Well, since it's a domain restriction, we know it has to be x. And it's of the inverse, which means it comes from the original range. So I go back and I look up here at the original, and I say, what is the range of that? Well, the range is the y's. This one starts down 4. So that means it starts at negative 4. And so my inverse domain will also start at negative 4. 
And then my original graph up here, once it started at negative 4, it'd be going up and to the right from there. So my y values would be getting bigger, which means a greater than or equal to. And so then that's my inverse's domain. x is greater than or equal to negative 4, showing that we're only going to be graphing the half of the parabola that's to the right of negative 4. All right, inverse equation of this one, you would multiply both sides by 2. And then having done so, you could then add the 10. Uh, remember, though, this is an inverse. Please remember to switch the x and y. And then you're solving it for y there. Notice this is just a crash course. We'll have a chance to ask questions if there's something that's still unclear afterwards. All right, domain and range in this case, you're given the domain and range of the original. We want the domain and range of the inverse. Remember, domain and range just switches. So to get my inverse's domain, I'm going to go to the range of the original, and I'm going to make it exactly the same, except that the y is going to become an x. So my domain should be x is less than or equal to 7. So then I just have to look down this list and find that x is less than or equal to 7 option and plug that in. Same thing for the range. That comes from the original domain. Just instead of x is less than or equal to, it will be y is less than or equal to 2 because we're swapping x and y. Okay, back to graphing again. This one is 2 to the power of x plus 4. The plus 4 moves it up and down. And so that means that our asymptote will move as we move it up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and just plot the asymptote here. And again, it doesn't matter where you plot that first point to lock the asymptote in because all it's doing is locking that asymptote. From there, I would normally start up 1 from my asymptote. Well, in this case, nothing's changing that. And so, yes, go ahead and plot that point right there. And then, since it's 2 to the power of x, when I go over 1, I go up 2 from there. And then I could submit that, and that would be good. This one's the same graph as the last one, basically, except that it's a negative. So the plus 5 hanging on the end tells me that I'm going to be putting my asymptote up 5. And then the negative, though, means that instead of starting up 1, I'm going to start down 1. And then double the distance as I go down. Notice it's still getting further away from the asymptote as I go to the right. All right, now we're on to graphing an exponential with the x minus 1 in the exponent. And so that minus 1 is going to be moving my graph to the right here. And so my asymptote doesn't move when I move it to the right. What does move is that my first point, instead of being on the axis here, is going to be right 1. So I plot that point, and then I can again double that distance as I go to the right. Uh, evaluate the logarithm. So notice that this is not a standard just log 31, it's log base 5 of 31. And so in order to evaluate this, you have to use the change of base formula. Make sure you have that handy in your notes. If it isn't already, make sure to get it there. Uh, we reminded ourselves of those notes last week. Uh, this is the one where in order to calculate it, we have to do the log divided by log. Specifically, log of 31 divided by log of 5. And then that's going to give us our answer. Just round it to the hundredth. That is two decimal places. All right. Number 10. Here we have two shifts involved. So my asymptote, I got to plot that first, right? That's changed by what moves it up or down. That's the number hanging on the end. So the plus 4 moves it up 4. I draw my asymptote there. Now normally my first point would be up 1 on the axis. In this case it's being moved over. The plus 1 moves it left 1. So that's actually going to be my first point instead. So I plot that, and then since it's 2 to the power of x, I double that height as I go to the right. This would then be done for that graph. Okay, rewrite the log in exponential form. Remember, the base goes first, so it would be r to the power of, and then log always equals the exponent. So it'd be r to the power of k equals a in this particular case. Of course, your letters will change and the order and all that stuff changes. The last one's the same idea, except you're writing it in logarithmic form. When entering your logarithm, yes, you can memorize how to type in like the base and all that. But if you don't remember, remember, you can always click this yellow arrow here. And as you go over here under functions, you have these log options and you would want to do log base n. Now you can change that 2 to be whatever you want it to be. So like in this case, I'd want that 2 to actually be a y because that's going to be the base of my logarithm. And then 
inside the parentheses is the n, and that always equals, of course, the exponent, which in this case happens to be x. I click save, and it types it in for me over here. Notice that as it's typed in, it uses an underscore to make that base a subscript, and then we have to put parentheses around that number that's inside of our logarithm from there.